Hi, it's Von Herzog. I'd like to welcome you back to The Social Club, my analog digital hybrid studio. Now, I know why you're here. You want to know how to build these things. The Seas King RO4Y MK3 speaker kit. These are the best studio monitors I have listened to in this space ever. They're the cleanest. They image the best. These are my new studio monitors. They are officially the only set of studio monitors I need. Uh, they've replaced multiple other sets. They are absolutely clear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. They do the whole spectrum and they do it amazingly flat. So let's dig into it. Let's see where we are. Let's see what we're talking about. And uh, let's go. First of all, I want to thank you for stopping by the video today. If you didn't already like and subscribe, please do so that you don't miss live premieres like this one. And if you'd like to see me build other speakers in the future, hit me up, drop me a line in the comments. So if there's some kits out there that you've seen that you want to know how to build and you'd like to have somebody walk you through the steps, let me know. I'll see what I can do. You know why you're here. You want to know how to build the Seas King RO4Y MK3 kit. All right, when I first saw this kit, I was blown away. I couldn't believe that I'd be able to build something this high quality at home. Seas did not sponsor this. Mattisound did not sponsor this. No one sponsored this. I did this all on my own. And it was my first build video and it took an insanely long amount of time. So if you even like it a little bit, please give me a like and subscribe because I put so much time into this thing, hoping that it would help all of you build this out easier. I didn't have this to go off of. I had to create it. Hopefully my creation can help you with your creation. One of the things I love about this kit is that it has digital inputs. And that means that the Fusion Amp can accept an AES, an optical, or a SPDIF input. So if you wanna send any of those digital signals to it, there's a 32-bit digital to analog converter on there. There's a DAC chip in there. And it's not just anyone, it's an AK4454 from AKM. So it's very high quality. It operates in floating point. You can just give it a digital signal. So if you think about it, this kit is really like an all-in-one hi-fi system if you want it to be. Theoretically, you could just feed it a digital signal from your CD player or your computer or whatever, and you can allow the DAC chip built into the amp to handle your conversion. And then you let the end core modules handle the amplification and then we have the Seos drivers as your hi-fi speaker. So if you think about it, this kit is an all-in-one hi-fi system that you're gonna be hard pressed to beat even when you try breaking it out with modules twice or three times the cost. But it's flexible too. So if you have a DAC that you love, use that and just feed it the analog signal. It's a really good kit. You have the option of unbalanced or balanced for analog. You have the option of three different forms of digital. So this thing has a lot of inputs and it's more than you could ask for. Now you might've seen in my teaser video that I was saying, I'm gonna show you how to build a speaker that compete with 10,000 and even $15,000 studio monitors. And you're probably thinking that's impossible. It's not, and I'll show you how. The $10,000 speaker I was referring to is the Ex Machina Pulsar. $15,000 speaker I was referring to is the new Active speaker from Amphion, where they're using the same sub as we're using in this kit. Full disclosure, I had Amphion 118 monitors with an Amphion Amp 500, and those things sounded amazing for me. I had them for five years. I sold them. I sold them to get the money to buy the kit for these. I do not regret it one bit. Amphion's a fantastic company. I was very happy using their speakers for the last five years. They've been great as far as communication goes. They've always been very accessible if I ever had any questions. They're doing amazing handmade speakers over there in Finland. And it's fantastic stuff you should definitely check out. I love them. Amphion has gone out and made their own active speaker now using the same sub you see here. And instead of having a coax, they still have a separate driver and their patented waveguide that they use. But I gotta tell you, I don't want any trickery in my crossover. Just give me a real coax with a single point source that is gonna image like this. Nothing else is gonna image like this except, you know, some ex machinas. But they're bleeding edge. It seems to me that ex machina took this design, worked with Seas to create a smaller sub, 
and went even more bleeding edge with it than what this is. Amphion and Ex Machina both use the same supplier for their drivers. They use Seos in Norway. You might remember Seos from my Speakers versus Studio Monitors build video, where I talked about why I selected them for tweeters for my own Studio Monitor designs I was building, because they're insanely high quality. They're amazingly clear, and they've been doing Hi-Fi for over 70 years, so they know what they're doing. This kit was actually designed by Horvard Solin, who is a product specialist over there at Seos in Norway. I'm sure I butchered your name. I'm sorry about that. What do you want? I'm from Philly. So while the X Machina speakers are amazing, maybe you don't have ten or $13,000 to spend to get theirs. And don't get me wrong, this isn't a direct one-to-one -one comparison. Back in March 2020, just before the pandemic kicked off, in fact, I was visiting them in early afternoon, and on my way back from Brooklyn, I heard on the radio that the world was closed. We were all closing down. Apparently two weeks was all it was going to take. But I had gone there. I met Dev. He took me through the entire facility. And I got to tell you, I have nothing bad to say about them. They have amazing studio monitors. And when I look at the cost, my eyes water, but they're worth it. They're using bleeding edge technology for materials in both the cabinet and the drivers. If you want to know more about them, go to their website. They're worth reading about. Amphion chose to create an active speaker finally after all this time, and they're using the same sub that you see in this build, but they're still using a separated mid-range and tweeter. And they're making an image like a point source by bringing the crossover frequency low enough, but it's not a point source. And these are. And the active amp can even perfect the time delay even more by milliseconds to get us to exactly a perfectly time aligned signal, which does wonders for our phase. It does wonders for our frequency response, and it keeps everything as clean and clear as we can get it. And I'm going to show you how to measure all that stuff once we're done. Let me walk you through the steps. I'm even going to give you some extra optional steps that you don't have to do, but they are going to end up with a better end product. And that's why I did them. Watch the whole video, decide which steps you want to apply, and then build them for yourself. And if you're not really into the whole cutting the wood thing, maybe you're nervous you're going to lose a finger. I only lost one finger, and it was totally worth it to get these things. I'm just kidding. I didn't lose a finger, guys. I should point out, I am not a woodworker. When I've showed this to some of my woodworking friends, they told me about a lot of things I could be doing different. And I'm sure the comments are going to be full of that stuff. Look. I'm not a woodworker. This isn't my strong suit, but I'm going to show you how I can do this even with minimal woodworking skills. So maybe listen to the suggestions in the comments to cut the wood a little safer than I did. Don't get me wrong. This is a good amount of work. Now, if you're a woodworker and you love this stuff, this is going to be a walk in the park for you. There's nothing overly complicated here. I mean, look, I did it. I'm far more comfortable dealing with the drivers and the electronics of a build. When I'm building speakers for inclined fidelity, I have Vince in Connecticut doing all of my woodworking for me. So he has a workshop up there. He makes amazing stuff. I've seen some of his furniture, really high end stuff. And he's dealing with all the cabinet building for me. I usually don't have to do this stuff. You know, I usually just get to do the fun part for me, which is the, the speakers. The woodworking is messy and it's not my favorite part but it's part of the build and I wanted to show you how to do it. But the essence of the DIY spirit is wanting to do it yourself. You wanna get in there and get something of greater value for less money, but with a fair amount of effort. But that effort is the worthy trade-off. When you spend this much time working on a speaker, hours, days, weeks, however long it takes you, you form a bond with it. It becomes your baby. You only want the best for it. So you want to take care of it. You want to do every little extra step you can to make it as good as it possibly could be. Because it's yours. And you care more. It's not just being churned out at a factory somewhere. You're doing it yourself. And that's the DIY spirit at heart. And now I want to show you how to do it yourself. So meet me over at the bar and I'll walk you through the components we're going to be using in this kit. All right, let's get down to the components that we're going to be using in this kit and talk about why they were selected. First up, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And I do mean elephant. This thing is enormous. It's 22 pounds. This thing is so heavy. This is the L26RO4Y. It's a four ohm, 10 inch subwoofer that can handle 
massive amounts of power, 250 RMS, 500 max. We're going to be giving it 250 RMS thanks to this Hypex amplifier. So let's talk about the other components. We got the C18EN002. Now, this is a coaxial unit, meaning there's a tweeter inside the mid-range. So this is a point source driver, meaning all the sound emanates from one point source, uh, and that's back here. So everything's time aligned. It's gonna sound absolutely phenomenal once we get it dropped in there. You connect to the mid-range here, you connect to the tweeter here. We have the appropriate tabs, thanks to the Matasound kit that we, I picked up, the accessory kit. And this is the amp, the Hypex FA253 Fusion amp. Now this is Encore modules, which are absolutely amazing, super low distortion, very high signal and noise. Now, the kit offers two different amplifiers, the 503 or the 253. I went with the 253. Both of them are three channel amps. Both of them are gonna give 100 watts to the tweeter. The real difference is this gives 250 watts by two and the 503 gives 500 watts by two. But the 503 has a fan in it. This has no fan. This uses the normal vents here for convection cooling. The problem with the fan for me is I'm gonna be in the studio using these as my studio monitors. I cannot worry about having the fan kick on when I'm in critical listening. I can't be worried about, oh, is that noise I'm hearing the fan? Oh, is the fan gonna kick on? I really need to be able to hear right now. I, I, I can't deal with it. I'm too neurotic to have that always in the back of my head. So I went with this, which is still gonna give this the RMS power that it wants to reach its maximum potential. And it's perfectly matched with these as well. So this is my kit. You might want to go with the 503, depending on your setup. Maybe you want the bigger amp. I don't know. I don't want the fan. I don't want the noise. So I'm going with the 253. No regrets. So with these three main components, we're going to build the best speaker you've ever heard. So let me show you how we do it.
One of the things I did pick up from Mattisound is the optional accessories package. It was an extra $48, but I picked it up and I'm going to tell you why. Here's what it includes. It has the quick connects for the tweeter tab. It's got the quick connects for the mid-range tab. And then we have the really big terminals for the subwoofer. We have the screws for the different speakers in the amp. Also, they give us the gasket that we put underneath the drivers so that they make a nice, tight, firm seal. They give us a bunch of really good Swedish-made 13-gauge speaker cable. So this is super classic speaker cable. Also, it came with polyfill that we're gonna put inside the cabinets. And this is wool felt that we're actually going to staple inside the cabinets to help bring down some of those in-cabinet resonances. So this gets stapled down. This gets fluffed out and spread around inside the cabinet. And thanks to Mattisound putting this little kit together, we have all the accessories that we need to be able to finish this speaker. So this next part is something that I'm personally adding to the build. It wasn't in the plans, but I think it's gonna, well, I know it's gonna help. So let me explain to you what it is. This is butyl sound deadening mat. You use it in your car typically uh, to cut down on road noise to make it easier to hear your stereo. So you get this mat like this, right? It is a thick rubber. You can peel this back. And when you peel this back, you stick it to the surface and then you use a heat gun to heat this up. And once this gets hot, it gets pliable, and then you take a roller and you'll roll over this, and you'll notice that these diamonds will go flat. That's how you know that it's properly adhered, is when these diamonds, when you can squish them down and make them flat. That's how you know. So we're gonna cut this for the individual panels before we glue it all up so that everything's in there. Because it's a lot easier to do it on the individual panels before you put it together than trying to get your hand in there in a heat gun trying to do this once the cabinet's already assembled. So we're gonna use this and you're gonna see how it helps deaden the cabinet even more than what we already have. This is gonna cut down on unwanted vibrations and resonances even more than the existing stuff in the accessories kit. More than the wool felt, more than the polyfill. This stuff's very important to keep the cabinet itself as dead as possible. Now that I've showed you all the different parts that we're going to use in this build, now let me show you how to apply the sound deadening mat before we roll the cabinet all together. I have my heat gun, I have my roller, I have a cutting board, a utility knife, and a straight edge. Here's a full sheet. What we'll do is we'll measure the parts that it should go over, and then I will apply them. So let's get started. Now, I'm not going to put them inside the amp channel in the back, on the top, bottom, or on the inside panels. I don't think I'm gonna need it there. When we do the braces, the internal braces, and the panel, they're going to be lined. So, we don't have to line the other side of it. It's still going to have the sound deadening properties applied to it. Let me show you now how we're gonna do this. Peel this off. Let me plug in here. And you see how it's going flat? Let's get some more heat on it. Why am I doing this, right? Well, it's already added weight to it, I can tell. So let's do the knock test. Much better, but now my knuckles hurt. So that's why we're doing this. You can hear, I hope, that 
just by knocking on it, this is much more dead. I'm not going to make you watch me do all of these, but now you have the idea and you know how to apply it. But I'll do a few more. Work up a sweat, I'm telling you. Takes some elbow grease to get these things done, but if you got elbow grease, you got nothing to worry about. So this is why we're doing it, this is it. So I'm sorry I'm sweating here, it's hot. Working with a heat gun, elbow grease, it's hot. So I'm gonna finish these up off camera and I'll regroup with you to roll the cabinets together. All right, so as you can see, here are the two cabinets, dry assembled still, but we have one without the sound deadening mat and one with the sound deadening mat. Now, the one without the sound deadening mat is still heavy. It's 24.8 pounds. So this thing's almost 25 pounds of just wood all on its own. This one is 29.2 pounds, which makes it almost four and a half pounds heavier, but without giving up almost any internal volume. This is a very thin mat that's being applied, but it's a very dense material. So it helps add to the weight of the cabinets and make them more inert without giving up that internal volume. Again, this isn't something that's required for this process, but it's something that I think is worthwhile enough to put the extra effort in to do. Okay, so check this out. I am currently gluing together the amp panels just because I want them as an L shape before we roll them into the cabinet. When we roll all this up together, I wanna to be able to have that shape already there so it's easier to go in. All right, so one thing I wanna to talk to you about here is we're going to be using this. This is gonna let us countersink some screws. What I wanna do here is I wanna add a screw here. So we're gonna drill down. And get a little bit of a countersink there. And that's how we do it. That helps countersink the screw so it'll be flat. It doesn't matter as much on these because these are going to be inside the cabinet, but we are going to use some screws to hold the braces in tight and we're going to want that to be countersunk. And that's how we do it. All right, now, again, this isn't gonna matter as much on these because they're gonna be inside the cabinet, but I still wanna make them look nice. So we're gonna use plastic wood and this is what we're gonna to use to fill in these holes so that we can sand them down flush. So we'll pop the top off. Oh yeah, there we go. As you can see, it's kind of like a putty material and we're just gonna take a little and smear it in the hole. See how easy that works? Just smear some in there and then this dries and you can sand it. Make sure I have it covered nice so I can sand it flat. A little bit more for this guy. So you can see, these sets of panels don't have the sound deadening applied yet. And essentially, that's how you do it. It's not too complicated. Make sure you have enough on there so that when you sand, you can go flush. And it cleans up pretty easy too. Now that we have the amp panel glued and screwed, I forgot to drill the holes in for the wires to go through. I forgot to put the holes through. So, I made a little hole in the sound deadening material, and now we have to pick a drill bit. 
So I'm going to go with a 5 16th drill bit. Boom. Swap it out. And now we need to drill into the panel. So I have a piece of scrap wood underneath just in case I go through. I don't want to hit the counter. Here we go. One down. Two down. All right, so now we have the holes. We should be able to feed speaker wire through there. Got the holes in this one. Let's do the other one. Once I put these holes in, then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna seal these things up with silicone in the crease to make sure that no air escapes and that we have a good airtight cabinet. Now that we have the panels all set up and the holes are screwed in them, the last thing we want to do before we start rolling them in is we want to make sure that these lines have silicone on them so that no air can escape. Um, in all the other joints in the cabinet, everything ends up being recessed, so there's less chance of air leakage, but this is just butted up against each other, and I really want to make sure no air escapes through there. We want a nice tight sealed cabinet. So that's what we're gonna do. So here we go. And you can take your finger and smear it in there when you're done. Nice and easy. And I'll just come in, take my finger here and nice and tight. There we go. We'll let that dry, and then these things are gonna be ready to get rolled up into the big cabinets when we do it. So, let's keep going. Now that we have our amp panel holes drilled and we're ready to kind of take those amp panels and, and fold them into the build that we're doing, let me show you how we're gonna roll these cabinets together. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some masking tape, painter's masking tape, and we're going to uh, put it over these edges like this. So we get a nice. All right, and now, because full disclosure, I did this once before and I tried rolling this up. Since I've added the weight panels to them, they got too heavy for the tape. So I'm gonna add some extra tape across just to make sure that it holds and doesn't wanna let go. Because we don't want this thing letting free. So it might look like overkill, but I'm doing it because I've already been through here and it didn't work the first time. So here's the revision. All right, one more seam here gonna be worth it though. When we're done and we're listening to these things. We're gonna know why we spent this much time working on it. This is gonna be worth it. We're gonna to wanna to keep listening. And that's the goal. All right, so I have everything taped and reinforced with extra tape. So hopefully this is strong enough to hold these panels and get this thing stood up and folded. So here we go. And there we go. Look at that, beautiful cube. Beautiful, right? And that's how we're doing it. That's how we're doing it. So we have the cabinets taped up and facing down now. Um, but one of the things that I have to do, and you're going to have to do if you did the cutouts the same way I did with the circular saw doing it side by side. If you did a router, you might not need this step, but using the circular saw, you can see here how some of the uh, passes hit a little deeper and you're left with this, this unevenness on the wood. 
we don't want that. We want a nice firm grip for the glue to grab and, and seal them together. So I grabbed this chisel set off of Amazon, three chisels, you know, it wasn't bad. You can buy them at Lowe's too. This is the three quarter, which is the perfect width for this. And this is how you do it. You just kind of put it in and look at that. You just scrape it up. See that? And now we're gonna have a nice, smooth surface for our brace to grab onto. See that? Much nicer, right? So we just wanna do that to make sure that we have a nice smooth surface. I think we're looking great. So you're gonna to wanna to do that to any of the, you know, cutouts that we put in here for the braces. Once we do that, we're gonna get some glue in these things, fold them up, clamp them, and uh, we're gonna have a full cabinet put together. So let's get to that next. All right, everything's prepared. The only thing we have to do now is glue them and clamp them. And I gotta admit, I'm a little nervous, you know? This is the first part where I'm on the clock. Once the glue hits these things, I have to make sure I get everything set and properly aligned. Um, you know, it's a lot of things to line up with this, so I, I really want to make sure. I'm trying to keep the tape down. We'll start by gluing the amp panel into the bottom. So I have Gorilla Glue Ultimate Woodworking Glue that I'm using here. As you can see, right, I have that in there. Then I just have a little brush and I'm just going to brush it into the wood. Need a little bit more. Sometimes after you uh, chisel it down, the wood gets really thirsty and it wants to drink up that glue. All right, so that looks like it's nice and smeared in there, right? So now I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom of the amp so it has a little bit of glue to go in with all right let's drop this in now all right it's in there all right I have to put the glue in these parts now I got to get the glue in all of the joints here so let's start laying it down Of glue. Now let's start getting it spread around. Looking good here guys. We're looking good. All right now I need to do it inside the seams here. Really want to get that glue in there. Make sure we have enough. We just want to get it coated. Like I said, we're on the clock here. We only have so much time. And again, I have this piece of scrap wood here so that I'm not getting wood on my counter. How are we doing there? We're looking good. Again, you want to make sure you have enough glue. Get the surfaces covered. It'll squeeze together help fill in those gaps but you don't want to leave bare wood if you can you want that glue down there so you get a nice good seal all right we're almost ready to stand this thing up all right here we go i'm going to bring this over we want to stand this up following. Now we're gonna get this guy in here. We're gonna give him a little bit of glue on here. All right. Can't forget to put the brace in. So let's 
make sure that we have the sides of the braces glued up tight. Even though we did the glue inside the gaps, we're going to want extra on this thing because we're not messing around. These things take a lot of glue. It's because they're big cabinets with a lot of surface area and a lot of joints. Here we go. All right, we ready? So we got to get this thing in here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this goes in like this, right? Okay, so that's nice and tight. Look at that. See how that's forming in the front there? See how the front is snapping in? Bring the side around, right? And now finally, we line the brace up. All right, so the brace is in there, right? You can see the brace is in there. And we're looking good. Now that we have this thing glued up, we have to clamp it together. So the tape is doing its job along there. I have three strap clamps we're gonna use. I'll show you how these work. This is the corner that we wanna close and make sure that it's very tight. So I pull the clamp as tight as I can get it here. I'm gonna move it up a little so it's not all the way down at the bottom. Okay, I think that's good. Pull the clamp down here to tighten it. Boom. And the way you tighten these then, now it's going to pull the cabinet together. So we can see that seam start to close, right? See that closing up? Oh, we're looking good. As you can tell, while that part looks good, these parts are pulling away a bit. Which is why we have some other clamps. This is another clamp made by the same people. Uh, I recommend this type of clamp if you're given the option because it has this. Uh, this is kind of an annoying little thing that they do. Um, so if you find this one, I prefer it. And this one has a little different approach. All right, tighten it up. How are we looking on the seam? Oh, look at that seam. That's beautiful. Damn near perfection. Tell you what, one more clamp for around the top. All right, so the last piece we have now is the top. So let's take the top, get it dropped in there. Again, we're going to have to line up the braces properly. Time to glue up the top. And we'll put some glue in here to the edges. Got to be honest, the part I was most nervous about turned out okay. Getting that edge seamed up so tightly is exactly what I wanted, but I wasn't sure I was able to do. But I did it. Sometimes you just have to have faith in yourself, guys. Sometimes... It can be daunting because you've never done it, you're scared, you're not really sure, like, oh man, am I even capable, right? You are. You're capable. I feel like Bob Ross with this brush. You're capable. Let's make a happy little speaker box. All right, here we go. You know what? I might have to loosen these to get the top on. So I get a little more play in here. I do want to clamp the top and the bottom together. See how that's tightening in like that? It's exactly what we need. Now I'm going to want to get these clamps under the back here. Let's 
seams are pretty tight. Nothing we can't fix up with a little filler and sanding. Beautiful. All right, guys. Just readjusting these braces to make sure that I have these seams as tight as I can get them, you know? couple hours we'll take the braces off I'll fill in any of the remaining gaps with filler here and then we're on to sanding and after sanding we can paint um, so we're almost there we're getting there uh, this build does require effort it doesn't happen on its own but it's gonna be worth it I know it is as soon as I hear it I'm gonna know it's worth every time every penny every hour minute second of blood sweat and tears that I put into this thing I know it's gonna pay off so I've made some adjustments to the clamps to make sure that I have everything set up right and now what I want to do is we want to drill those holes to secure the braces in so that this cabinet stays nice and tight we're gonna countersink just like I showed before all right I have my center punch and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the ruler and we're going to measure down 20 centimeters from the top because 20 centimeters from the top is going to be where the brace is. It's about the middle of the brace. There we go. Check over here from the top. 20. So now that we've done that, Let's come over here. We're going to drill the first hole. All right, nice countersink. Swap it. Get the screw. Look at that. Beautiful. Just sunk enough that we can fill it with some putty, sand it and we're going to be able to use it. It's going to be amazing. Let's do the one on the other side. And you're going to want to do that around the sides. I'm not going to show you every one, but you'll get the idea. Look at that. This is beautiful stuff, guys. Truly beautiful stuff. So we're going to do that along the sides here. All right, so I'm like hiding under braces here. So I'm going to go around to the sides now and do the same type of thing. 20 centimeters down from the top. Punch the hole. Now I know where I am. Come back here, do the same thing. All right, as I start putting screws in this thing, I'm taking some of the braces off because the screws are gonna hold it in place. We don't need the brace after that. So you can see I'm kind of going through and taking things off as I put screws in. I have screws here, here, and here on the front. Um, I have a couple on the sides. I'm just trying to make sure that this thing is as tight and dead as we can get it. So as I come through here and I can take these this brace off. Beautiful. And I can take this brace off. All right. Peel this tape back. See what we're working with over here. All right. All right. 
I gotta tell you, I'm happy with how this thing folded together. Everything's in there tight. <sighs> Crazy dead. You can see I put screws in the front and in the braces on the side here. A couple across the back. But that is all just to make sure that the stuff holds tight. There's a couple on the top holding it down, you know. But now that I have all these holes, plastic wood time. And you've seen me do this before, so you know what this is. Filling in the holes. Filling in the holes. I gotta tell you, you know, I made the joke about Bob Ross, but this is a very tranquil and uh, rewarding kind of hobby, you know. Ooh. Cleaned a little too much out there. Got to go back in. Add some back in. It's very crucial that we have these things flush with the cabinet so that when we paint it, we don't see any outlines. If you wanted to use plywood or hardwood to make this, you can. Being that this is going to be in my studio, it's not going to be in my living room or, you know, somewhere where it's on like a big display. It's in the studio, which is usually pretty dimly lit. Um, you know, it's all about vibe in the studio, so you try and keep it as vibey as you can. All right, getting these in so good. All right, and now we're going to put a little bit in these front ones. Put some putty in here. Just closing these up like they never happened. As far as we're concerned, they didn't. They're going to be nice and hidden. And again, I can be a little messy with these because we're going to sand them down flush. So if it goes on a little thick, I'm not upset about it. Once it dries, it's sandable. We just don't want anything that's going to dry with an indentation that we have to fill again. I'm applying this stuff liberally because I don't care if I'm wasting any. I just want the holes covered properly. That's all I care about. And again, I'm not a woodworker. This isn't my forte. The back end of the speakers, you know, working on the electronics and that kind of stuff, loading the speakers in, that's that's where I thrive. This woodworking stuff's a bit messy for my taste. I gotta tell you, the last time I used a circular saw was shop class in middle school. I am not a well-versed woodworker. I'm just not. And that's okay. Because I don't have to be. You can see them here. Come around to the back. Got to let all this dry. Then we should be in good shape. All right, now that we have this thing all finished and glued and as solid as a tank, the last thing we want to do before we take them out back and sand them we want to make sure that we seal this up with silicone like we did for the amp brace. We want to make sure that this thing's airtight, nothing's escaping. So let's do that now. What we're doing is we're just going to put it into the seal here. Hope you can see that there. And then I come in and I will just push it down with my finger to make sure we have a nice tight seal. And we're going to do that for all of the different seams in here. It's sealing up beautifully. All right, looking pretty good. And you get the idea, right? We're just going to seal up all of these seams. So I'm going to turn the camera off, but you get the idea. This is what we're doing. And then we take them out back and sand them.
All right, I gotta tell you, I'm really happy with how this came together, how it's sanded. I think the seams are super tight all the way around. We have the wood filler in, everything's sanded down nicely. This thing's gonna be fantastic once we get some Duratex paint on it. But before we get to the paint, I do wanna add the felt in. So we're gonna measure this out, we're gonna put the felt in, staple it into place, and then these things are gonna be ready to add paint. I just wanna take the camera off and show you real quick how nice this thing rolled together. So let's look. Nice and tight across all the seams. Very happy. All in all, this should take the paint pretty well. We're going to be using Duratex because Duratex works really nicely in the studio to help stop the, the paint from scuffing. Uh, Duratex does a lot to really help keep these things from getting damaged. So. Let's do the felt. All right, before we can paint these things, we wanna get the felt installed. So let's do that now. Got the cabinet, got the felt, got the ruler. I have the original plans of the speaker so I know how big the panels are. And I got my scissors to cut the felt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at the shapes and sizes that these need to be so that we can cut them in there. All right, 177 by 272. So let's get this out and let's see what we're working with. If we take this and I go 272, it'll take me to here. Varying depths here, I guess, right? So let's just cut 272 by 272 and we'll cut out what we need. I'm cutting a little under, I'm about 270. Let's see how it fits. All right, fits across the bottom nicely, right? Okay, can you see this? Getting it lined up in here. And we'll cut right here. All right, let's try and get that in there now. Awesome. Right? So, let's get this stapled down. All right, I have my staple gun and I have my Sure Bonder number six staples that we're going to be using to hold this felt down. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it in here, and we're gonna try and staple this down into place, okay? So I'll start right here. This thing isn't going anywhere and that's all we're doing here guys we're not reinventing the wheel you know we're just trying to get these staples in here so that they hold tight and the spelt isn't flying around on us so that's it that's all there is to it you know we put it in it's pretty easy you get it stapled down make sure your staples are in tight enough if they're not pull them out put another one in right and you can see that these are all stapled in here to keep this down so this is what we're doing, you know, we're just lining the inside with this. So we want to cover all the silver with the felt. We're going to finish this felt. I'm not going to make you watch anymore. I'm going to finish up on my own. You know, let's get these things painted so we can listen. I'm dying over here, you know. I've put in so much time and work on these things. This is my first build video. I've never made a build video before. And I got to tell you, it's 10 times more work than just building the speaker out on its own. Because I'm constantly, did I get everything? Did I, the shot, the angles, I'm recording the audio separately from the camera. It, it's a whole thing. After all the time I put into this, I just want to get it up and running. I'm so excited to use it. I cannot wait. Let's keep going. Let's do it. If you're having trouble getting some of the felt stapled in, you can use a 3M spray adhesive. There's a couple different ones you can use. Uh, I have the photo mount one here, so I'm going to use it, but they make a couple different 3M sprays um, that work. So as you can see, I sprayed this up with a bunch of the 3M spray, and what I'm gonna do is now put it on the ceiling in there. So we'll get this inside. We'll work it up into position. Feel it around. There we go. Push that firm so it's nice and tight. But this spray mount's honestly working a little easier than the staples, so if you can do the spray mount, do it. It's definitely messier, but I think it'll be worth it. And that's staying up there. We'll still put a couple staples up into the roof just to make sure it stays in case the adhesive ever breaks down and starts to fall. But for the most part, we should be good now. That all being said, I look like a Muppet now 
because the wool is sticking to the glue on my fingers. Just be careful. Maybe you want to use gloves. I should have thought that through before I started. We're just getting all this stuff in here to make sure that these things stay where they're supposed to be and they're stuck there and everything is nice and deadened. All right, we're finally here. It's finally time to paint. I have the black Duratex paint in the gallon container here. I have a nine inch textured roller that we're going to be using. I also have two little brushes of different sizes to do touch-ups uh, for the outside. And this is for like inside the driver rings just to make sure that we can get uh, everything covered with a nice thin coat. So let's do it, man. Let's crack this paint open. We're gonna pour it into the tray, get the roller and start rolling this. And uh, after this, we wire it up and put the drivers in and then we're gonna listen. So I can't wait, let's get it painted. Let's go. First thing we do, we're gonna crack open the paint. There we go. Now, you can see this stuff's thick. So watch how this pours out. See that? It's like a big, thick goop, right? That's good to start. Get our roller, get it onto our actual roller. Let's do some painting. All right, so like any paint, you just want to smear this stuff around. This is going to go on thick, you know? So we'll start over here. See how thick this stuff's going on? So it's going to take a bunch of rolls to get the surfaces covered. You can see why we have the tarp down. Anything we end up touching, we don't want to get paint on it. So that's why the tarp is here. I have the speaker on some feet just to get it lifted up off of uh, the surface so that we can kind of go down to the edge with it. We want to be able to get the edges. Just making sure we have a nice even coat, as even as we can get it. All right, let's keep going. Pretty good first coat. I'll come around and do some touch-ups with the brushes now. You can see we kind of went outside here. The brush kind of hit some of the front. And since we want the front textured, we're going to re-roll that so it looks a little nicer. But again, we just want to kind of fill in these black rings. As you can kind of see, you're kind of just getting the textures. You have a little bit of control over the texture, not too much control. All right, time to add a little more paint. Stuff's going on really nice. You can see how big and thick it is, right? It's not nearly as runny as a normal paint. And that's what helps it dry so thick. This is almost like a truck bed liner. It's almost like the same material. That real thick paint that dries very durable. Just a reminder too, you don't have to paint these things, you know? Maybe you did Baltic birch plywood and you want to stain it because you think it's going to look great. You can do that. I'm using these in the studio. They might still get moved around from time to time. I want something durable on them. I don't want to have to handle them with kid gloves when I'm in the studio. I want something durable. And what's more durable than Duratex? Nothing I've found. But yeah, I just want to make sure this all looks as good as it can look. Nice and flat here so we have a nice smooth surface for the drivers to grab to. And we're in good shape, guys. And I'm just painting the insides of the amp panels, just so they're black. It's not necessary. No one's going to see them unless you're taking the amp out. But I've come this far. I'm going to do it to everything, you know? I'm going to make sure they're as nice as I can get them. No cotton corners this late in the game. 
All right, guys, we did it. These are all painted. We're gonna let these dry. And then we're gonna get the drivers and the amp installed. And we're gonna listen to them. All right, I'm gonna weigh this thing. Take the camera down. Whoa. That's without any drivers or electronics. That's just the cab. We did it. Here we are. We have the speakers all painted, all ready to go. We have to take the wires from the amp and load them through the holes. But first, we want to twist them up. You want to braid them. We're going to do that, and then I'll show you which ones get fed through which holes so that we have the appropriate wires going to the appropriate chambers. All right, so when you pull this out, you're gonna have two harnesses. This is gonna be the harnesses for the 250 by two. This is the harness for the tweeter. The red and the black are going to be fed into the subwoofer. The blue and the gray are going to the mid range. And then this is gonna be going to the tweeter. Let's get these things twisted up so that we can get them fed through. So one of the things I wanna do here is I'm gonna take this cabinet out of the way and take this one and put it face down so that we can get everything set up. But before I lay it down, I wanna show you how to feed the wires through. So let's get to braiding. Real simple, right? Just twisting them up. Nothing too complicated. Uh, we have our wires twisted up, ready to get fed through the cabs. So um, first thing we're gonna to wanna to do, let's take the blue and the gray and we're gonna feed them through the top hole. Make sure that we can pull that out. Just feeding that in. And that means that this red and black here are going to the sub. So they're gonna go into the bottom chamber. There we go, feeding it through. Look at that, beautiful, right? But then we have the tweeter one and we wanna feed the tweeter one through the top. There's our tweeter, there's our mid, plenty of space on these. And you wanna make sure that you have enough that you can lay the amp down on the back of the speaker. So having this extra really matters. Leave these in here and we're gonna lay the speaker face down and get this amp loaded in the back. Let's do it. All right, here we are. And the good news is this isn't too complicated. There's only two possible places you can plug these things. So it's not gonna be that hard. We take the big one here and we're plugging it to the main module here, the stereo module. Do you see this here? That's gonna be where that one plugs in. Just like that. And then the tweeter is going to the extra module over here. And that's it. So they recommend that you can lay it here and that you have enough wire here. And the, we know that we have enough here. What we really need to do now is seal these holes up. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use hot glue. Because the hot glue is sonically opaque. It doesn't let the vibrations travel through. And it, you can also, with the pump action of the gun, you can squeeze the glue into the holes to make sure it fills out the cracks. And we have no air seepage. We're gonna keep this thing airtight. Let's do it. All right, so what we want to do is we want to take the hot glue gun here. I got this Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. We're just going to squeeze the glue into the hole here. See, I'm feeding it down into the hole, making sure we're not getting any air gaps. Come through to this one. Don't be stingy with it. We're trying to keep that air out. You want to make sure you block it up in all directions. All right, I think we're looking good here, guys. Okay, now that we're getting ready to drop this amp in, got the screws from my accessories kit from Mattisound, because we need screws to hold this amp down. Let's get this amp flipped over and down so that we can start lining it up. And seeing how we look. All 
right. So one of the things I want to do here is try and get it as straight as I can so that the recess is even. I want to try and get that recess even. What we want to do is we want to drill some pilot holes. So I have a very little drill bit. I'm just going to give these a little bit of space to go down into. So I want to get these corners in so that I know that this thing is properly placed where I want it. And then we can do the pilots for the other side and get those holes drilled in. Here we go. Get these pilots in the other side. All right. And again, this back part doesn't have to be airtight. In fact, it's not supposed to be. That's why we have these vents here for the convection cooling. And that's what's going to keep it cool instead of having a fan kick in. There we go. Looking good. Now, let's get the drivers loaded in. We have the speaker flipped over, the amp is installed, it's facing down. I put some foam planks down to sit the speaker on so that the amp isn't just pushing into the surface. And um, it's finally time to get these speakers ready. So one of the last things I want to do uh, before we get the speaker in is I want to add this polyfill that came in the kit from Mattis Out. And one of the things they want you to do is kind of tease it out and then you just kind of load it in there once you kind of get it teased out a little bit. And what this does is this is just gonna slow down the waves inside the box. And it actually helps to kind of tighten the base a bit. Give you a more detailed, pronounced low. And that's what we want. So we're gonna tease this stuff out as much as we can get it. So that it fills this whole cabinet area. And we're still gonna put some up in the top with the mid-range too. So we'll start loading some up in the smaller cab. All right, that should be good. So as you can see, we have these things really teased out and fluffed out with this stuff. All right, so to get this sub in this chamber, we need to connect it to the amp. These are the wires coming through that we're gonna be using for the sub. So I wanna make sure that I keep this long enough that if I take the speaker out, I can sit the subwoofer next to the cabinet. So I wanna leave enough slack on here and that there's plenty of room for it back in there. Just gonna strip the wire. And then thanks to the Mata Sound kit, we have the connectors that we need for these. Okay, so I have these things on here, but they're not tightened. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a double method here because I'm one for overkill. I'm going to crimp them, and then I'm going to solder them. So there are the crimps, and now I will bring them down here. And just to make sure that we are in great shape, and the way you want to properly solder something is you want to heat the material first before you add the solder so that it's ready to accept it. There we go. That's not going anywhere. 
let's do the other one. Let me just pull these up to go over them. And these are ready to be connected. Oh, let's pull this sub up here. Oh, I hear my shoulder crack. All right, on either side is where the connectors are. You can see they sewed the tinsel leads down to the spider. Impeccable craftsmanship on this thing. Here we go, so check it. Positive one is on. Negative one is on. All right, we are properly loaded, folks. Let's drop this speaker down in. There we go, my lord. Ooh, baby. Time to drill some pilot holes for the subwoofer. All right, we have these aux socket number 10s to mount the subwoofer in. All right, here we go. We did it. Subwoofer's in. Exciting! All right, subwoofer's in. Let's get these coaxes mounted so that we can finish this thing out and listen. All right, so we have the connections off of this. We know that this is gonna be going to the mid-range, this is gonna be going to the tweeter. So let's do the mid-range tabs first. Give this a little squeeze. So we have these wires terminated now. So we want to get them connected to the mid-range, dropped in here, and installed. So let me grab the mid-range. And like I was saying, these are very small terminals here on the back, which is why they recommended using Quick Connects, which is what we're doing. You know, if you had enough surface area to solder to on the tab, it would be one thing, but they're really fine tabs. So we don't want to mess around and try and solder directly to them and potentially screw up the speaker. One slid on. Let's slide this other one on. All right, tweeters installed. Let's get the mid range connected. Before we drop this mid range down into the cabinet and we're finally good and we get it mounted, we want to add some of this foam gasket around to make sure that we get a really nice tight seal underneath the lip of the speaker basket. I think we look pretty good. All right, let's get these pilot holes drilled in here and then we can mount this in and we're ready to connect this thing and get the DSP files loaded. Let's do it. Here we 
go. Don't want to over tighten that yet. We want to make sure we get all the holes lined up properly. There we go. Now we're getting them. We did it. We got it all assembled. Now we just got to hook it up, apply the AMP DSP profiles, and we can listen. I can't wait, we're so close. But this thing's beautiful. Look at it, ooh, such a beautiful baby. Here we go. I can't imagine it looking any more beautiful than it is. So, we did it. Oh, holy shit, this thing's heavy now. Oh my God, I got heavier. I gotta weigh this thing. I gotta see how heavy it is because it might weigh as much as me at this point. Oh. Oh. 61.1 pounds. So this thing went from 32 even in an empty cabinet to 61.1 when everything's finally loaded in. While I was just out mowing the grass, I heard the FedEx driver come. And that meant he was delivering my new stands because these things are enormous and they weren't gonna fit on these. That wasn't gonna work. So, here's what I got. I got these. The Aperta 200 stands. Should be the right size. These take up to 75 pounds a piece. This is a 62 pound speaker we know. So these should be perfectly made for it. Also, a big difference is where these are made of plastic, these are aluminum. So I'm really hoping that these are gonna help isolate this speaker in the way it needs to be to be able to perform as clean and clearly on the low end as I want it to. I can't wait to get them on these things and really put these things through their paces. So let's do it. Well, these definitely look like they're gonna foot the bill. Ooh, oh wow. That is acoustically dead. These things are beautiful. It's gonna fit on there great. Yeah, finally we have what we need. I'd originally ordered the 430s just for these, like the regular 430s thinking I was gonna lay this on its side, but I really like how it's doing for me vertically in the room and I want these stands. It's gonna be a big improvement, so I can't wait. So this is what we're doing. We're gonna get these installed on these. All right, let's do it. All right, now we have to go to the Hypex website and download the appropriate files to be able to finish this speaker off. So we have to upgrade the firmware and we have to get Filter Designer. So let's grab those things now. For the firmware, make sure that you have the proper amp selected, either the 253 or the 503, and then download the corresponding firmware. After you've downloaded the firmware, make sure you grab the newest version of Hypex filter designer. That's going to be how we load the presets into the speakers. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up the filter designer software, okay? When you open it up, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to open like this. So we'll hit filter designer. Well, actually, first, before we do anything, we're going to plug it in. Plug it right there, and we're plugging it right into Now, I've already gone through this entire process, so you'll see a DSP name load here. But ultimately, when this all loads in here, the first thing you're going to want to do is come over here and click Firmware Update. And then you grab the firmware update that you downloaded, this Hypex file. It'll tell you when your firmware is finished updating. Then we have to open Filter Designer. So open up Filter Designer. 
Okay, here we are. We're in Filter Designer. Come over here, go to Open, and look at your file path. If you're looking at your file path here, and you've installed the presets in the proper location, they should show up for you here, just like this. Just click OK. And now it is loading in the filter data for the different drivers and the config file. So it's going to give us all of the loaded in DSP that we need. There's just one change that we have to do after we upload all these presets, and that's going to be to apply a six decibel EQ shelf on the low end. And here we are. So look at this thing. Up here is where you can select the different drivers. We're currently on the tweeter driver. This would be the mid-range driver. And the subwoofer. So there it is. So this is what they're showing that preset 3 should look like. All right. So what we're going to want to do now is we have all of these presets in here. We need to upload them to the DSP. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here and click Upload Current Preset. No, we want Upload All Presets. We want to upload all three presets at the same time so we don't have to do each one individually. So let's do it. Upload All Presets. First one going through, second one going through, third one going through. And that quickly, we flashed it all. DSP Upload. The upload completed successfully. That's perfectly what we want to see. Now that we have that up there, and these things are in, they're almost ready to use. So you can get out of the filter designer here, because you've loaded in everything you need. You can save it if you want, save it under a different name, whatever. And now we're back here. Do you see this EQ button here? These are different for each of the filter presets, so we're going to have to do this three times. We have to do it for each filter, but here's what we're doing. You click the EQ, you come over here, and you pick the third band. It's at 200 hertz, it should have a 0.707Q, and you're just going to come over here and put six decibels of gain on it and make sure that it is enabled. Boom, like that, right? And make sure that EQ is active right here, okay? Once we have the active EQ and the EQ enabled, we have to apply this to each of the three presets and upload it manually. So let's do it. Okay, close. Yes, we'll upload it. Okay, for filter two, we're gonna do the same thing. Come over here, hit EQ, come to your third band, six decibels again, upload to DSP. Okay. Close. Okay, then we come to EQ3. Click it. Come to the third one. 6 dB of gain. Close. Yes, I would like to upload it. Get it on up there. As you can see, that didn't take a whole lot, right? Everything's up there. So now, as you can see on the screen, we have the firmware updated to version 5.5 and we have the DSP file name of what's loaded to the speaker. There's a few other things I want to show you on here. There's some device settings. And let me show you how to set those up. So we come over to device settings. Boom. You click it, and it's going to open this window. Now, in this window, you have lots of different options. Here's options for which one of your speakers is the master unit if you have the remote enabled. Oh, speaker went to sleep. Okay, so what just happened is a perfect example of what I'm trying to illustrate here. You can set this up a bunch of different ways. So if I come in here and I go to device settings, what happened there was the speaker went to sleep because we have a timer over here, activate signal detection, turn off after 15 minutes. If this amp hasn't received any input in 15 minutes, it goes to sleep. And here's what's really amazing about that. These things draw only a half a watt per hour when asleep. These aren't going to be a drain on your energy bill to just keep them turned on all the time. They'll go to sleep as they need to, and you can wake them up with the remote. It's kind of great. But in here, you also have the option to set a soft clip enabled limiter. I'm not using it because I don't want any extra limiters added to my music. You know, being that I'm in a studio, I want it as accurate and open as it can be. I would use the soft clip enabled if you plan on playing things really loud. Like if you want more of a concert experience than you do like a casual listening experience, maybe use the soft clip limiter. But for me, I'm keeping it off. 
The other thing here is you can determine if a speaker is the left, right, or both. So I have this speaker set up as my left, the other one set up as my right. It only makes sense. And I think that's it. Let's listen to these things. I don't want to keep waiting. Let's listen to them. I gotta take some measurements. Okay, to put it simply, this kit is amazing. What else can I say? I don't know anything that sounds this good for this price point. So get your money together, go order this kit, and build it out for yourself. There's three presets that come naturally built into these things. Uh, the first one is a pretty flat response from Seos. The second one is a stepped off bass response. And then the third one is a stepped up bass response. I'm in a larger room here, so I took the third preset, the stepped up bass response, and I started tweaking it individually for my room. These fusion amps are unbelievable. Whether you take the 253 or the 503, you end up with 15 biquads per driver. Each biquad allows you to put in a filter point like an EQ. You can choose the type of filter, the slope, the Q, etc. So using the Hypex filter designer and a reference microphone, I was able to tailor the frequency response to the space to an unbelievably flat degree, from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Now, this room has a natural null that comes at about 32 hertz. I know it's there, there's not much I can do about it. I can't change the structure that I'm in. And bass notes that long, I can't really mitigate. So the only thing I could do when I was choosing where to sit in the room was I shifted the listening space to where that null was the least offensive. And down around 32 hertz is pretty unoffensive. There's not a lot of frequencies that go that low. That's definitely sub frequencies. So I'm going to use the DSP correction to correct as much as I can. But I just want to show you the frequency response of these things because they're unbelievable. They sound great for whatever that's worth. All right, now that we have this all set up, let's take a measurement and see what we look like. Look at this frequency response. This is bonkers. Look at the phase. Look at how it stays in phase. The speaker is insane. Each one of these gradations is a decibel point, and look how tight that is. I'm within 1 dB almost the entire way. I mean, if I had a little more time, I'm sure I could work these three little dips out, but I had to get this video finished and I had to get it edited and uploaded, so I'm gonna have to work on this on my own time. I didn't have time to do it for this video, but you can see how flat it is. And guys, this is the sum of both of the speakers playing at the same time in this room being recorded at the listening point. So this is what I hear when I sit down here. This is how linear it is. It's absolutely amazing. And like I said, I have that 32 hertz null that I can't do anything about, but there it is. It's magic. This speaker is absolute magic. Were you impressed by the frequency response? You gotta drop me some comments because I know this is amazing. You're not going to find another speaker for $3,000 that's going to play like this. You can't go out and purchase one retail that's going to sound anything close to these for three grand. You just can't. The amount of money you're saving on labor is what makes this worth it. What I love about listening to music on these things is it sounds like they're holographic. It sounds like the music is just suspended in 3D space and not on one flat plane. Things have depth and texture, and they're arranged in different places. And you know, that's usually the testament to a good mix engineer. But when you can hear it, and you can hear these things suspended in space, it will blow your mind. I heard textures I'd never heard in songs before. I'm a musician, I make music. I heard things in my own songs I've never heard before <laughs> because I didn't have the resolution that these things have. It's, it's bonkers. Truly remarkable my new monitors for sure. You know, I don't even have a B set up at this point because I, I don't want to. These are the only things I want to listen to all the time. 
you know, my old monitors were like the Hubble Space Telescope. Amazing, right? They could see much further than what I could with my naked eye. But these things are like the James Webb Space Telescope. It's a whole other world. I feel like I'm looking back to the beginning of the universe with these things. Also, the sweet spot in these things is enormous. I could drive a truck through it. It's that big. Especially when you're mixing and mastering, you don't want to be locked in a vice. You don't want your head to be stuck to where you can't move it. The, the sweet spot in this is enormous. When I'm reaching for things, I never lose it. I don't lose the mix as I'm moving. It's just, it sounds like it's the phantom center is shifting and it's phenomenal. And once you get these things all finished and the DSP files are loaded and all you want to do is sit back and listen, enjoy it. You're not going to find anything that sounds better than this and you're going to be blown away. That's my recommendation. Get the kit, save your money, get the kit, get it built out, and then just enjoy it. And then you're done. You have amazing amps matched with amazing speakers in an amazing cabinet that you built. There's not a better feeling, trust me. So I've shown you how to do this and you can do it yourself now. If you feel so inclined, grab your saw, your router, get all your parts together, and build it out. Now, if you look at this build video and you go, man, I really want those speakers, but I do not want to do all that work. I think we might have a solution for you. Vince and I are going to start building these through Inclined Fidelity. So if you want one of these kits built out for you, let us do it. He's going to build the cabinets in Connecticut. I'm going to assemble them do final assembly and shipping here in Pennsylvania. And you can get these for yourself. Now, if you went with the 253 amp like I used in my build, which I have to tell you is plenty, <laughs> we're going to build that out for $59.99. $5,999. And we'll build you this kit shipped. But if you want the 503, just add 500 bucks, $64.99, $6,499. And we'll build these out for you. Now, if you want us to build out the floor standing models, that's a whole other price structure and that's a custom quote. So hit us up about that. But for now, these are the prices that we are using. If they update in the future, apologies, this video is being made when it's being made. <laughs> but if the prices manage to fluctuate in the future because parts become more expensive, please understand. But for now, if you don't wanna build these things and you'd like us to do it for you, and luckily I don't have to do the cabinet work anymore. I have Vince for that. $59.99, $64.99. Let me know what you're interested in. Let's go. And if you'd like to know about the other speakers Vince and I are working on, check out inclinedfidelity.com. So there is an optional remote control for this thing. It's not terribly expensive. I already have a monitor controller in my studio that I'm using, so I didn't want to add another volume setting option in there somewhere. But it is something to think about if that's something you would like to take advantage of. You can get a remote control for it and sit on the couch and just fire these things up. So something to consider. So I've taken the DSP and I've tweaked it to my room. Now, if you want to do that, if you have a reference grade mic with a calibration file and everything, and you want to calibrate your own speakers for your own space, they recommend you don't raise it more than nine decibels. And that's because you don't want to clip the DSP chip. And if you want to make these things your main living room floor standing speakers, you can. If you extend the subchamber down another 50 centimeters and you add two passive radiators, these things turn into floor standing monsters. If you do that, you have to recalibrate the DSP file for the subwoofer because adding in the passive radiators is going to have to change the calibration. I have to say thank you to my buddy Michael Angela Santi for loaning me the DeWalt table saw. Uh, without that saw, these speakers don't get built. So thank you, Michael. Also, thank you to Ryan Hunter for loaning me the saw horses. Thank you. And I want to send a very big thank you to Camila Steen and Horvard Soline at Seos in Norway. They answered all my questions throughout this process, which was a long process and a lot of questions. And they were very helpful along the way. So thank you. Thank you to Adam Johnson at Mattisound. I ordered this kit through Mattisound. Now, Mattisound did not sponsor this video. Seos did not sponsor this video. I have no sponsors. This is just me doing this on my own, but I'm gonna shout out the companies that I used because if you wanna know how to do it, I'll just send you through the same channels I went through. That being said, Sound Imports is another way you can get this kit if you live in Europe 
or somewhere over there. But thank you to Adam at Mattisound. You were very helpful uh, when I had questions and just t walking me through the build. Adam built himself a pair. He told me how fantastic they are and he was right. And I think that does it. So thank you so much for coming to my first build video. I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that this was useful. And if it wasn't, apologies. I really didn't want to waste your time. I really hope that you would get something from this. But if you didn't, I'm sorry. But I'm hoping the majority of you out there enjoyed this. And if you did, please let me know in the comments. So here we are, we're at the end. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. And until next time, this has been Von Herzog from The Social Club.